Hi, I'm James McGuire, and on today's eSpeaks, we're talking about enterprise artificial intelligence, specifically in terms of revenue creation, using AI to help sales and marketing. You know that's a really growing area. To discuss that, I'm joined by Oleg Roginski, founder and CEO of People.ai. Oleg, very good to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. I'm really excited to be here, James, and I was looking forward to this conversation. All right, great. So let's talk about artificial intelligence and, and where we are with AI these days. It seems like there's a lot of misconceptions and certainly some, some challenges around AI. There's a lot of hype around artificial intelligence as if it can mm -hmm. solve all problems when in fact it's still pretty much in its infancy. A, a, a mm -hmm. Agree, disagree with that? Oh, 100%. Um, I, uh, the way I think about AI is that it is indeed in its infancy today and it is good for specific um, use cases, but we are not in the age of artificial general intelligence yet, where AI can answer all the questions. And so um, the thing to know there is that mo all of the AI algorithms, or most of them, are actually open source. You can go and train your own AI models, download it from some university website or Apache projects and get going. So if everybody is working with roughly the same algorithms, what truly matters is the data you feed to train the AI. Hmm. And so um, there's a lot of hype around training AI with publicly available data. But guess what? If you have the same algorithms and the same data, your AI will be the same as everybody else's. So what truly, truly matters is training AI on hard to get or even only privately available data set that produces unique results. And that's what true enterprise companies that can actually claim that they can do AI or machine learning uh, are built on, which is training their machine learning models to solve specific use cases with specific private data sets. So you're saying really artificial intelligence doesn't come down to the algorithm. It really comes down to the data source. A hundred percent. That's fascinating. Okay. Because I, I think probably somewhere out there where they where someone would dispute that someone from Google would say, Hey, our algorithms aren't the algorithms we've downloaded from the university. You know, we, we've got these specially, you know, hand coded algorithms that are that are so hot. We've got great data, but our algorithms are much better too. What do you think about that? I, I would disagree. And furthermore, Google is actually publishing a lot of the algorithms, most of 90% of uh, Google's work is data engineering of creating new data sets that make what they do, search, recommendation, et cetera, um, work better based on bringing more data sets. Hmm. And so uh, even in Google's case, it's not about uh, open source. It's not about the algorithm themselves. It's about the fact that they have everybody in the world using their product to do search so they can use the data from your search results, for example, to do better search and recommendations and then combine it with how you use your YouTube and what you watch on YouTube, combine that with what you talk about on your Gmail. And that's having all these additional data sets is what, is what gives Google an ability to have way better experience for their Interesting. users. Okay. So let's talk about your company, people.ai. Mm -hmm. so, so how does it help customers like App Dynamics and, and Data Robot increase, increase the revenue created by every sales rep? How does that work, please? Absolutely. So uh, if we uh, go back to what is actually enterprise sales, Enterprise sales itself is uh, a drive towards creating repeatability in explaining what, how your product would improve the life or the uh, efficiency of your customer. Mm -hmm. By default, repeatable sales process, which is, what you, which is the prerequisite of not being a small startup anymore. You can only be, grow by building a repeatable sales process. Mm -hmm. uh, it means that you have found a way to have multiple salespeople repeat a similar path from first conversation with the customer to closing a deal mm -hmm. and then to making the customer successful. And so if you kind of unpeel that onion, the failure in enterprise sales happens when your salespeople fail to follow that repeatable sales process when they do the shortcuts or when they didn't, weren't even trained the right way to do it or when they were I don't know, lazy or not enabled enough, all that stuff. So the premise behind enterprise AI for sales and revenue is to have 
AI understand everything that's happening right now in your go-to-market. So everything your salespeople, your marketing people, et cetera, do with the customer, mm -hmm. compare what do the best people do to what do the less successful people in your go-to-market team do with the customer, mm -hmm. identify the differences and provide recommendations or guidance on how to bridge the gap mm -hmm. in terms of activity and behavior of your top performers and your not top performers. Mm -hmm. And so if everybody's operating like your top performers, guess what? Your revenue is going to grow. One question, if I may, sorry to interrupt. So are, are you recording the conversation? How do you know uh, to, to record the activity between the, the top performers and the so-so performers? Well, guess what? Uh, even before COVID, 70, 80% of activity was in your calendar, your email, your Zoom, your uh, dial, like your VoIP solution, et cetera. With mm -hmm. COVID, we were prohibited for two years to even have a coffee with the customer. So all of the offline activity was prohibited. Mm -hmm. Therefore, literally everything you've been doing with the customer or prospect for the past two years has been digital. It mm -hmm. left this digital trace. And so AI systems like ours are able to collect all of the dots of all of the activities that happen between you and your prospect, make sense out of it, reconstruct the DNA of a deal. That's, that's how I call it. Mm -hmm. what had to happen to make it to have been done and then compare one to another the behavior of your salespeople, of your prospects of your marketing teams um, customer success teams and with that figure out what's good what's bad and how to make bad better mm, interesting okay well so as as companies work with with the system what what is a typical challenge they might run into what's a what's a pain point um and and what advice might you give them you know what? Uh, at this point, we've reached the maturity of software that we know it works. Otherwise, people uh -huh. like it wouldn't, be, wouldn't be a billion dollar company. Let's put it gotcha. this way. Right, right. Where the biggest challenge we run into is sophistication of the customer in readiness to make changes to how they've been, they, they, how they, they do their work moving forward. Mm -hmm. So, customer side change management, either they are too busy. They don't have enough people to do the change management, or there is not enough executive support internally to change how you do things because they've been doing them for 20 years like this. Right. Is where we actually run into um, slowdowns of, of the deployment and, and value delivery. So mm -hmm. at this point, the software is streamlined, it works, we know how to deploy it, we've done it over 250 times. We've seen results come in over 250 times. It's all about where the prospect or customer is ready to receive the value. Hmm. Really interesting. Well, let's, let's look to the future of artificial intelligence. I mean, you, you made the really interesting point that AI is not necessarily about the, the, the algorithm, it's about the data that feeds it, makes perfect sense. What, what do you see in terms of the future of AI as you look forward and, and how is this relationship between the algorithm and the data gonna change going forward, if at all, as you see it? I think this, this relationship is going to continue emphasizing the value of the data. The further we go, there is hundreds of companies, including the one that you uh, mentioned, Data Robot. What Data Robot does, they abstract the complexity of the algorithms. They literally are saying, hey, look, you don't even need to know what kind of algorithms to apply to this AI problem. Give us the data and, and manually produce some results as a human. So like, hey, you're looking for this kind of outcomes. And then we're going to test every possible algorithm that exists on the planet and see which of the algorithms gets us to the results the closest to what you as a human has produced. Hmm. So they, come, they basically, Data Robot's business is to simplify the process of building AI to literally one button. Huh. So, Would you refer to that as low-code AI or is it a separate idea? Uh, it's, I mean, low code AI is one, but in their case, it's like auto AI. You don't even need to do low code. It's a no code AI. <laughs> right, okay. uh, and so where I'm going with that is I think the complexity of algorithmic part of AI building will keep on getting so simple that a high school student will be able to build AI systems for the next five, 10 years. Hmm. So that will be completely removed with the help of cloud services like AWS building super simple to use AI systems 
uh, new interfaces, new training, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So the value of the right data set will continue becoming more and more important until even today, it's like 90% of the value. Eventually, it's going to be 120% of the value. Hmm. How clean, reliable, and private and unique your data set is. And so uh, that's the future of AI. It's whoever is looking to build an AI company today needs to be asking this as a question. Do you actually have access to the data set that carries the description in it of how something can be done better than status quo that nobody else has access to? Or even better, not only it's a unique data set that has the value, but also nobody else has access to, but this data set maybe even is disappearing after you consume it, making it fully defensible that nobody will ever have access to the data set. Hmm. That's fascinating. Um, Oleg, it's going to be a very interesting sector to watch. Obviously, artificial intelligence is going to change so much about business. Uh, I totally appreciate you sharing expertise today. Thank you very much. Thank you.